guest to show you. Uh, first, I'll introduce myself. My name is Margaret. Um, I am one of the parrot keepers here at Elmwood Park Zoo. Um, I unintentionally matched our, uh, our guest here today. We have the same colors on, so we'll see if we can introduce her. Her name is Azul. Azul, can you say hello? Say hi. Good girl. <laughs> so Azul is a blue and gold macaw. Um, a lot of people call them blue and yellow macaws. It is the same bird. I like to say blue and gold. It makes them sound a little bit more fancy. Um, plus, look at that bright yellow color. It's super pretty and gold. She is really excited to be here and say hi to you guys today. Um, so as I said, she is a macaw. She's in the um, Ara genus, which is the true macaws. Um, there are, I think, about eight parrot species in the Ara genus. Um, so the blue and golds are one of the medium-sized ones in that family group. Um, she is about uh, 950 grams, which is somewhere between two and three pounds, so not super duper heavy. <laughs> yeah. She's getting all fluffy. It's very exciting. Yes, Azul. So, as you can see, Azul has a super duper sharp beak. So, we'll talk about that a little bit first. Um, Azul's beak can crush things that are very, very uh, strong, like nuts. That is one of the things that they would eat in the wild. So I have a hazelnut here for her to crack open for you guys. She's like, I can do my tricks, look at me. So we'll see if she can do a trick to uh, earn the nut. Can you do wings? Can you do wings? Good girl. So as you can see, we'll watch her crack that open. Sometimes she likes to mess with it in her mouth for a little while first. She's like, I'm not gonna show you. Um, but with that super strong beak, she will make quick work of that nutshell and crack it right open. Um, you can also see her tongue is really good at pulling out things from shells. So that goes for uh, seeds, nuts, fruits, um, anything that has something cased over it. Uh, the tongue actually has a bone in it. So uh, we'll see. She'll get it out in a minute here. There it goes. Good job. So that, uh, that tongue with that bone in it is good for getting things out of shells, but it's also really good for crushing it. So you can see she's using that tongue to uh, break apart that nut in her mouth and eat it. <laughs> Nuts are definitely one of Azul's favorite foods. Um, so Azul here is 18 years old. Um, she's pretty young. They can actually live well into their 60s. Um, the longest lived blue and gold macaw was actually over 100 years old. So they have very, very long lives, um, especially if they're very healthy and happy. They'll live well into their 60s, 80s, or even 100. Um, Miss Azul, her favorite foods in general tend to be nuts, as you can see, um, but she also loves grapes. She loves most fruit. Uh, cantaloupe is a big favorite. Um, apples are a big favorite. Uh, but she will basically do anything for a grape. <laughs> um, so in the wild, blue and gold macaws will eat all sorts of fruit, seeds, nuts, and uh, different kinds of vegetables or leafy greens. Um, one thing that's very cool about most macaw species is they actually will eat clay. Um, so you can see a lot of different macaw species congregate, congregating to areas uh, like by riverbanks that have clay. Um, there are a couple different theories as to why that they do that. <laughs> the first one is that they think um, it helps them get some nutrients that they're missing in their diet. The other one uh, is pretty interesting. Macaws will actually eat some toxic plants in the rainforest. Um, and some people think that eating clay will help them neutralize those toxins and um, help them digest them a little bit better. So they'll congregate in you know, hundreds of macaws on clay licks and eat up that clay. Um, so they do tend to hang out in social groups when they're feeding especially, um, but they are monogamous, which means that they mate for life. So they'll find a partner and they will stay with them for their entire lives. Um, typically when they have babies, uh, the babies will stay with them for up to a year of their life and then they'll go find their own mate or their own groups to hang out with. Um, but they will congregate in big groups for feeding and foraging. They usually head out in the morning um, from their nesting site or their uh, roosting site, and then they'll go out and feed all together miles away, and then they'll come back to their nest site at the end of the day. Um, so, Miss Azul seems to be almost done with that nut, but as you can see, she is holding that nut with her foot, obviously. So. Birds do not have hands, as you can see. They've got wings instead. Um, so they have to use those feet to hold on to things. 
Um, they have a really, really special foot pattern that will help them hold on to things and be able to balance on one foot really easily and balance on their branches. Um, so you can see she's got two toes facing forward and two toes facing backwards. So that's just gonna help them grab onto things and be able to balance a little bit better. Now we'll see if we can turn her around here so you can see her super long tail. Good job. So their tail is gonna fan out when they fly. So when you see them flying over the rainforest, uh, they'll their tail will fan out really wide and help them change directions, help them get that flight up in the air. Um, they actually have pretty quick flight. They can fly up to speeds of 35 miles an hour, um, which is pretty quick for such a large bird. So it's pretty impressive. Um, and with their monogamous mates, they will fly together. They actually fly with their wings almost touching, <laughs> um, which is pretty cute, especially when they've got their young with them. The young will fly right up top of them. As you can see, she's getting a little vocal, which is great. I was hoping she would say some things for you guys today. Um, macaws in general are pretty good at mimicking speech. Um, they need tons of different vocalizations in the wild to be able to talk to their friends, uh, let their mate know where they are. When they're in those huge groups of macaws, it's going to help them uh, figure out who they're talking to, especially when there's, you know, over a hundred macaws screaming at once. You have to be able to be very, very loud in order to get heard. Um, so they are fairly good at mimicking. Let's see. Should we get a grape? So you'll see I'm giving her her favorite treat is a grape. Um, she's going to probably skin that grape. They have very uh, dexterous uh, beak and hands and she will just rub the insides right out of that grape and then chuck the skin on the floor because who likes skin? <laughs> Such a good girl. Um, so at the zoo here we do a lot of training and uh, things like that with her. So. As you can see, I did her wings behavior before. Um, most of the training that we do with any of our parrots here are gonna be um, for, for any uh, health issues, basically. So it's cute to look at, it's fun, but it really does have a purpose. So for example, Mrs. Zool can wave, she can put her wings out in the air, and she can do spins for us, and all of that will help us look at things on her body. So when she waves, we can look at the bottom of her feet. When she puts her wings out, we can look underneath her wings and see if anything is going on with her. Um, so I would say she seems very excited to be coming for you guys. Can you wave for them? Good girl. Can you do a spin? Yeah, so when she does that, then you can see the back of her uh, wings, the back of her tail, uh, back of her head, and make sure everything looks good. So all of our training that we do is in the best interest of the parrots here. Um, we don't do anything really just for fun, but sometimes it can be fun to watch them do that. Um, a lot of people ask, can they talk? That is the most common question I probably get about her. Um, so I was saying earlier, they can mimic, they're really good at mimicking things. Blue and golds in general are a little, <laughs> I was getting really excited, a little less good at mimicking things as some other parrot species, um, like African gray macaw, uh, African gray parrots, or um, things like Amazons are really good at mimicking. So she can talk a little bit, she can say hi and hello and things like that, but for the most part, she doesn't like to in front of people. She can get kind of shy. Um, so Azul here was someone's pet before she came to the zoo. Um, so that is one thing we get asked a lot too, is can you have these guys as pets? Uh, the short answer is yes, you can. However, I would definitely say that these are not the best pets to have unless you really, really, really know what you're doing. Um, they are as smart as a four-year-old child. So they are, they need a lot of entertainment, a lot of stimulation. Um, something that we do at the zoo to help her get that entertainment and stimulation is give her enrichment. Um, so enrichment is basically anything that will entertain them. So I have a fun example today. I'm going to give her one of her favorite things to do. It's an easy one, but she does love it. Um, so basically we're going to put a snack into a paper towel and roll it up and give it to her and see if she wants to find the snack inside there. <laughs> You're at the wrong end. There you go. And this is a really good ah! example. <laughs> She's like, no, thank you. There's some in there, I swear. Um, this is a really good example of a foraging behavior. So especially in the wild, they're going to, uh, you know, be pulling things off trees and foraging around in the lower branches and stuff like that. And we like to try to recreate some of the ways that they would do things in the wild um, to help their natural behaviors come out. Are you sure you don't want it? You want to try again? 
She's like, I know you have nuts, and that is not what that is. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we change her. We give her brand new enrichment every single day to help keep her entertained. Um, we take her outside to get her some good sunshine time. She likes to be on this perch outside. Um, she'll go out on the exhibit, the Bird Paradise exhibit here. <laughs> it's very loud, I know. And hang out with some of the other parrot species that we have here. <laughs> I don't know where you think you're going, man. I know. So, um, I think that we are just about ready for some questions. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments and we'll answer some of them for you. Um, so let's see, Owen and Tyler would like to know if Azul has any family members at Elmwood Park Zoo. Um, she does not since she was someone's pet before she came here. Uh, she doesn't have any family members, but she does have some good friends that she hangs out with. Like I said, she does go on exhibit with our Conyers and they hang out together and she loves the people that she trains with. Um, so she does have some friends, but no family here. See, Zachary would like to know if Azul knows any tricks. So we were saying earlier, she does know a few behaviors. Um, they're really only for medical reasons for the most part, but she does know a couple. Let's see if we can get her to do the wings again. Can you turn around? Can you do wings? Good girl. There you go. So she does know, she knows a couple tricks very, very well, but we'd like to teach her some new ones. Um, one in particular that we're hoping to reinforce that she used to know how to do uh, is recycling, actually. So she has these little trash, a little trash bin and a recycling bin, and she knows where to put the pizza and where to put the uh, little water bottle. So we're working on that with her to see if she can uh, show some people how to recycle. See, Liam and Ronan would like to know how are they able to mimic sounds? That is an awesome question. Uh, thank you for that one. So that basically that comes from a unique brain region with a pair of nested vocal learning centers. So they are really, really good at hearing and taking in what they hear and then mimicking that. Faith would like to know, does she use her colors to camouflage? That's an awesome question, Faith. Um, she does not use her colors to camouflage. Her colors are actually going to be helpful for her to stand out. Um, in the rainforest, there's a lot of colors and things going on, so sometimes it might help a little bit, but for the most part, she's going to stand out, especially with those other macaws when they're all forging together, um, so that they can tell who's who and they can see their mates and let's see uh, where the other macaws are. Carla would like to know, what is the difference between macaws and parrots? That's an awesome question. Um, so macaw is a type of parrot, actually. So um, there's the whole family of parrots where uh, conures and Amazons and African greys and macaws and everything live under, and then macaw is a genus underneath that family. Um, Alexis would like to know, what is the lifespan of a macaw in captivity? Um, so about the same as what I said earlier, they can live well over 60 years. Um, the oldest lived one was over 100 years old. Uh, so if they are healthy and they're well taken care of and they're happy, they can live to be a very, very old age, which is great. Um, usually in captivity, they'll live about over 60 years, uh, depending on if they're healthy as well. Um, Joseph would like to know, how are their wings strong enough to lift them in the air? Awesome question! So... Their wings, <laughs> she's like, I can show you, see? Um, they have super specialized muscles um, in their body that are gonna help them get that flight. They also have hollow bones, so they are actually pretty light, um, so they don't need a whole lot to get them up off the air. And they have very, very strong muscles to help them get up there, but those bones are light, they are not very heavy, even though they are pretty big birds. Um, so they're really great at flying that way. Cameron would like to know how high do macaws fly in the wild? So that's awesome. So they can get up to anywhere between 2,000 and 5,000 feet high, way, way up there. So if anyone's ever been to the rainforest and seen a macaw flying over, they look like little specks way up in the air. <laughs> She's like, look at me. Okay. We'll give her one more net and see if she can crack that one open while we talk about it. Mia would like to know how many eggs do they lay in a clutch? Um, so typically they'll lay uh, between two and three eggs. Um, only one of them tends to make it uh, to being a live baby because um, especially with the larger birds, 
when they're foraging for food to bring back to their babies. Um, it's pretty hard to get enough to feed two or three birds, so usually the strongest one will hatch and make it to adulthood, hopefully. So, um, yes, they lay two to three eggs, but only one baby will usually make it. Um, John would like to know, can Azul fly? Um, so because Azul was someone's pet and she didn't really use her flight muscles for a long time, she's not very good at flying. She can get a little bit of lift, just enough, so if she fell off something, she wouldn't fall to the ground. Um, but since her muscles aren't as strong as they would be, especially if she were out in the wild, um, she's not super good at flying. So she technically could if she used them a lot, a lot every single day, but they're probably, the muscles are probably a little bit atrophied now, so she can't get a whole lot of lift, but just enough so she fell, she would be okay. Valerie would like to know, can she say any words? <laughs> Um, so she can say a lot of words. As you can see, she doesn't really want to say them in front of people usually. Um, she gets a little, a little bit of stage fright sometimes, but um, she can mimic hello and hi. Um, she has a really goofy one that she does that I don't know who taught her, but she knows how to meow like a cat. So sometimes in the morning we'll come in and she'll be meowing <laughs> very loudly, which I think is pretty funny. Um, Caro would like to know, what animals eat macaws in the wild? Awesome question. So typically that's going to be birds of prey, um, like the harpy eagle, hawk eagles, um, or orange-breasted falcons. So really big, um, strong birds of prey like that are usually going to be their predators. Um, Hope would like to know, how long is her beak? I do not know the exact number, but I would guess just from looking at it, it's about two inches long from the base to the end there, um, which is a pretty long beak. There are definitely macaws with larger ones, but she is about a medium sized one, as I said earlier. So I'd say about two inches. Um, let's see. Nalia, I hope I said that right. I would like to know, does she like shiny things? Oh, sometimes. So I don't know if you guys tuned in before a couple weeks ago, we had a cockatoo named Sally on here who really likes keys. Um, we have tried to give Azul some stuff like that before and she doesn't really do much with it. Um, her favorite kind of enrichment is usually paper or things that she can shred or tear apart. Um, not a huge fan of shiny things. Paige would like to know, are macaws types of birds of prey? No, they are not. That's a really good question. So birds of prey are typically carnivores. Azul here is an herbivore. So she only <coughs> eats plant material and nuts and seeds, stuff like that. So she uh, is in the parrot family. No parrots <coughs> are in the bird of prey category. Zachary would like to know when do macaws mate? So they'll typically mate <coughs> in springtime, but it can go anywhere from January to July. So they have about a six month period where they'll do that. Um, they also will mate and have young about once every one to two years. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, so they'll have that breeding season, have their baby, it'll stick around with them for a while, and then about a year or two later, they'll do it all again. Uh, Robert, Robert would like to know, how do they sleep? Um, so parrots in general, especially big parrots like Azul here, uh, Usually they'll tuck their head behind their back and they'll just snooze like that. Um, they actually need a lot of sleep, more than you would think. Uh, they usually will sleep anywhere from 8 to 12 hours a night, almost like humans. Uh, they need a lot, a lot of sleep, so they do a lot better. That is one reason why it can be really difficult to have them as pets. It's because they usually don't get the amount of sleep that they need and there's usually too much light in people's houses. Um, so. They definitely need about as much sleep as a human. Kara would like to know, do parrots take baths? <laughs> That's an awesome question. Yes, they do. Uh, they get a little dusty, especially when they're foraging for food and on those play lakes, they'll get a little bit dirty. So, yeah. So they do like to take baths. As we'll here, we'll sometimes take a spritz bath. So we'll take a bottle, a spritz bottle with water in it, and we'll just spritz it all over her. And it, really excited about it, so that is one way she takes a bath. Okay, we have time for about three more questions. We'll see if people can give us a couple more questions. <coughs> Peyton would like to know how old is Azul and when is her birthday? So Azul is 18 years old. <coughs> I 
and we actually unfortunately do not know when her birth date is. I wish we did so we could throw a birthday party, but um, we do not know the exact date. We only know what year it was. Um, but maybe we'll just make up one for her so we can have a birthday party every year. <laughs> uh, Zachary would like to know what is her favorite trick to do. I think her favorite trick to do is where she puts her wings up because sometimes she does that when she's really excited. So I think she just enjoys doing that. Probably gives her a good stretch and it's fun. <laughs> and then I think this is our last question. Natalie would like to know, are blue and gold macaws endangered? Awesome question, Natalie. They are not endangered. Um, so they are what is called least concern. Um, so there are over, they think about 10,000 of them in the wild right now, um, all throughout South America. Um, there is a macaw called the hyacinth macaw that is critically endangered. Um, so usually when macaws are in trouble, it is because of deforestation. So people cutting down their trees in the rainforest um, or because of the pet trade, because so many people want these cool birds as pets. And unfortunately, that takes them out of the wild and uh, reduces their numbers. So she is least concerned right now, but their numbers are declining a little bit. So we just wanna make sure that we keep their habitat really nice and we don't take any more out of the wild. All right, guys, I think that is all the time we have today. So Miss Azul, can you say goodbye to everyone? Thank you. <laughs> that was so slow. Thank you guys so much for joining us today and meeting Azul. I hope you had fun and this was great. See you all later.